Good morning. My name is Brian Parks. I'm a senior leader within St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of uh, each of you here today and also like to welcome you to our organization. Uh, today, the intent is to conduct training on uh, our organizational vision and also the, the main value that flows through our organization. And that value is faithfulness. Uh, that, that, that value flows from top to bottom throughout. And I'd like to ensure that each of you understand how that ties to, to the organization. And so with that, let's get started. Today's overview in regards to what we're going to talk about and what I intend, I intend for each of you to take away. Uh, first thing is going to be our organizational vision. We're going to talk about exactly what that is. After that, I'm going to give an example of uh, our vision at work uh, within our organization currently. Uh, from there, we'll talk about the history of St. Jude, where we started and how we've gotten to where we are. Uh, well, I'll discuss the faithfulness value specifically um, that ties both from top to bottom throughout organization. Uh, from there, we'll jump into the faithfulness value again and discuss how that uh, basically is displayed uh, throughout our organization. After that, we'll talk about the faithfulness value and how that's connected to St. Jude. From there, I'll jump into decision making and how faithfulness value affects uh, our decisions, especially with the leadership team. And, and last, I'll talk about some lessons learned from the faithfulness value and how the, the impacts that that has had on our organization. And once we're done, uh, I'll kind of wrap everything up and that'll be it. So first things first, the organizational vision for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospitals as follows. To sell, accelerate progress against catastrophic disease at a global level, meaning the, the whole intent as to why we're here and the direction we're going is to literally fight and solve every single type of cancer uh, with, with a, obviously a significant emphasis on pediatric care. And that's literally our purpose. Every single day we are fighting to solve cancer, to treat patients around the world, and to ensure that every children has a, a chance basically at living longer or, or to being completely cured which kind of also ties into our founder and a statement that he made uh, early on, which was no kidding, uh, and that's Danny Thomas. No child should die in the dawn of life. And that's truly what he believed. And that's literally the, the institution, the organization that we have built, which is the entire reason as to why we're here. And the most important uh, aspect as to the vision and direction we're headed. Now that you understand the vision, let's take a look at how this is uh, actually uh, being executed within the workplace and, and the types of employees that we have and their dedication to, to St. Jude. An example here is more or less a research team. Um, the picture that you see is Dr. Mar Martin Roussel. More or less, she worked uh, with a group of our staff in terms of uh, research to literally create a, a tumor that mimics uh, a tumor that would form in the human body. The specific type of tumor was actually uh, medulloblastoma, which is a form of brain cancer. And so the whole reason and purpose of this team was to then develop and look at medications to fight this type of cancer. And so with the help of her team and also utilizing high tech uh, robot technology that we have simultaneously, these folks working together more or less identified two specific drugs that could combat and fight this form of cancer in patients. The best part about this was that through their dedication and commitment to this organization, understanding our vision, they were actually able to increase the life expectancy of patients that come in with this disease by more than 40%, which is significant, right? That's a large, well, that's a large amount of time that's, you know, given folks that unfortunately diagnosed with, with this type of cancer, more time with their families and their loved ones. Um, and so this is just an example of our vision, right? Like basically solving, preventing, uh, cancer of every form and, and fighting to ensure that folks have a, a longer life and then at, at some point in time hopefully are cured. So now you understand uh, an example of our vision at work. Uh, let's jump into our next topic. So having renewed vision at work, let's take a look at the history of St. Jude and why this is important to you because uh, you truly need to understand where we've come from, how we began and, and how we've gotten to where we are. This organization was founded by Danny Thomas, who um, basically is a famous entertainer. Um, back in the early 1950s, um, more or less, you know, didn't get 
off to like the best start, right? It took him a little while to get going. Um, but during that time when he was going through a, a rougher period and, and didn't have a solid job, uh, he actually found out that he had a baby on the way. And due to having little to no money, you know, he didn't know what to do. So he actually attended a local mass and uh, placed his faith, you know, more or less in the Lord and just said, hey, you know, please help me and give me direction, give me some guidance. And so not long after that, he actually caught a major break on, on a famous TV show, uh, which, you know, brought in you know, lots of money, more or less, and, and allowed him to take care of his family in a way that at one point he wasn't sure he was going to be able to do. And so in the 1950s, he got his major break. And so after having that and, and being very, uh, very blessed, he realized, hey, I'd like to give back in some way, shape or form. And so in the city of Chicago, he reached out to um, the archbishop there to just seek some advice and say, hey, what should I do? And, and that member was Cardinal Samuel Stritch. And so you know, it took a little bit of conversation and, and more or less from there came up with a decision to, to start a children's hospital. So continue to look at our history. Like I just mentioned, uh, the best idea for him was, was to open a children's hospital. And his main goal was to provide these services for free for families, for, for the individuals that are seeking care from, from literally from start to finish. And the first thought was, hey, I'm already in Chicago. Let's open a bit, you know, an organization there. Uh, but having more discussion with the archbishop, it, it, there was already other hospitals in the area and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. So we said, hey, you should take your idea and go somewhere where they could really use the service and, and are in dire need. And so the idea of Memphis, Tennessee was thrown out and that's exactly where uh, Danny Thomas and his family ended up going. Uh, so they got there in the later 1950s and you know, reached out to the local community. Initially had a little bit of um, discontent there, but not long after a group of folks got together and, and, and obviously this thing had took off. Um, by 1962, St. Jude was officially opened um, and they began seeing patients. They began conducting research. Their most important uh, piece during that time was, was researching the acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is also known as all. Um, there were a group of three doctors, Dr. Pinkel, uh, Dr. Emil Fry III, and then Dr. Emil Fryrich, and they all worked together from 1962 to 1965, conducting significant amount of research on, on this uh, form of cancer. And, and it, that key time frame is actually what kicked off um, research for this to then transcend numerous amount of years even to this day uh, but they made a significant impact in just a superior a short period of time on the lives of 37 folks that at that time had been diagnosed already which hadn't really been done up to this point so right out the gate attacking the vision uh, of you know making sure that all all forms of cancer are are to someday hope to god you know cured but um, even at best just prolonging the life in people so now that you understand where we where we came from, uh, how the organization started, and more or less where we are now, uh, let's take a th look at the value of faithfulness and its impact uh, on the organization. So first we got we got to understand like what faithfulness is. So according to Merriam-Webster, faithfulness is defined as you know, more or less never wavering and remaining loyal in one's beliefs across the board. And so how this applies to our organization. We, from long, basically back, dating back to the 1960s, have built a foundation of trust and faith in our patients. So when they have nowhere else to turn, they look to us because that's that's literally that's what we do, right? We we, we literally stick to our vision, and that is to to solve every form of cancer and to fight every form of cancer in in children and and for any family. And so an example of that is is there was a young girl um, who more or less came to our hospital a couple years ago and more or less had, was having eye trouble. And so her parents brought her because they didn't know where to go. They didn't know what else to do. So we did some scans and did some research. It turns out she actually had a brain tumor um, that was causing issues with her eyesight. And so at that point in time, you know, obviously the family was devastated and they didn't know who else to turn to, right? And so they came to us. And so we were their last form of faith in that they truly they truly placed all their trust in us and that's literally our job and so 
luckily, right, we were able to identify it and we were able to cure the cancer. And now that young girl is out doing great things and have a lot of fun and, and living a normal life. And so when folks are at their lowest, and they don't know where else to turn. They place their faith in us. And that's how that, that value of faithfulness applies. In addition to that, I mentioned this earlier in the history piece of this, but we're still fighting acute, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which also called as all. And so we could really kicked off research back from 60, 1962 to 1965. And now from 1960s into the 1990s, early 2000s, that has continued, right? So we've stuck to it. We've, we've literally stuck to our vision and never given up and been constantly fighting this disease. And so the same thing applies right now. We're improving the lives of over two thirds of our patients that are, are unfortunately diagnosed with this. And so anytime this happens, right, a family finds out, once again, they're placing their trust in us because they don't have anywhere else to go. So that faith, right, we are that faith. We are that trust um, that people confide in and, and reach to when, when they're in dire need. Um, additional piece to that is a different angle, but it still applies is, you know, during the global pandemic with COVID and all those things, um, people turn to us, right? We work directly with the child, Childhood Cancer International uh, organization. We worked with them to identify um, a plan on how we would continue to treat patients during times of, of, of the pandemic. And so that bond, right, that relationship formed and same thing. People looked to us when they were, they didn't know what to do because of COVID, where they could go, you know, all those things. So once again, still, still maintaining that value of, hey, we're, we're, we're going to take care of every single person, no matter the circumstance. Now that you understand what faithfulness is, let's talk about how it's displayed and, and, and the focus that we have here within our organization. I talked about it a, a few moments ago, but once again, looking at the global pandemic, uh, there was an article written by Marara et al. Uh, back in 2021, which more or less covered um, how we displayed faithfulness during the uh, COVID-19, during the pandemic. We basically worked with a global COVID-19 observatory and resource center for childhood cancer. And the whole idea was to get information out to both patients and also um, providers throughout the world so that they we were all on the same page, right? That we were always communicating and that, hey, even more now in the time, worst of times, we are still fighting to ensure that, you know, we're working together and, and we're solving the problems and still fighting cancer in the hardest of times. And during that time, we built a website to communicate this information. We ended up um, developing treatment strategies um, for over 33,000 people, or roughly almost 33,000, 32,295 to be exact, uh, users across 164 countries, which is just unreal, right? That, that's literally our commitment is to that, and that's the expectation that we have. Um, in addition to that, fast forward a little bit, uh, a few, few, few months ago, our organization was the first organization uh, to evacuate hundreds of children during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And the whole goal there was to get those kids out of Ukraine into a facility where they could continue to receive treatment, uh, which is exactly what we did. So in the worst of times for those families and for those children, we still provide the support they needed to ensure um, that they were able to receive the care that they, they rightfully deserve. Um, and that's those two examples are, are how we have displayed uh, faithfulness, right? What our organization is doing uh, for our, for our patients, and, um, for folks around the world. So now to understand how faithfulness is displayed within St. Jude, let's talk about the connection that faithfulness has uh, to our organization. The first example uh, of, of how this connection exists is in our commitment to, to other countries around the world. So last year, uh, 2021, we partnered with the World Health Organization uh, to establish a new initiative that would literally provide uh, services and uh, support for, for children that are diagnosed with cancer, uh, more or less around the world. Um, just to highlight, every year, 400,000 children are diagnosed with cancer globally, which is crazy. But as you understand this, why our vision is so important and why this commitment wasn't so, so important. So we, we worked with uh, the World Health Organization. We invested $200 million towards this initiative, which will allow uh, patients that don't have access in low um, to middle um, uh, income countries to, 
to gain access, and that is at no cost to them. And so that connection, right, of faithfulness is just showing that, hey, we're also not only only worried about people locally or children locally, we're also focused on connecting this faith to, to global, uh, our global partners and to work with the World Health Organization to do so. Next from there is, is in addition to how this uh, faithfulness is connected, is through other organizations that support us, right? They understand our, our value of faithfulness and are willing to support it. And then through that, we inspire other organizations to do so. So uh, for the last 10 years, in fact, they, this happened a couple years early, but Tri-Delta worked because they understood our vision, right? And that value of faithfulness, they were so dedicated to us um, because of you know the, what we do for children that they, for 10 years, basically conducted a fundraiser that actually they finished and completed early to raise $60 million for our organization so that we continue to fight cancer uh, within, within, uh, within our patients. In addition to that, another way that faithfulness is connected to, to organization is through the education uh, sector. And so we literally reach out on, on a frequent basis to the local community, the local Memphis community, to educate children um, about cancer. Uh, instead of them just finding out, you know, that a child maybe that they know or something along those lines, right? We're getting out ahead of it and we're connecting that value, right? So that, A, we're fighting it, but we're also letting people know and informing them and doing everything in our power to ensure they understand uh, why we're here. And with that, it allows our staff to get out into the local community to be involved and be seen in a different capacity and just to be seen in, you know, maybe the doctor's clothing or have that, that sort of image. So we're, we're changing, changing, you know, perception at that front as well. So now that you understand how faithfulness is connected to our organization, let's talk about how it impacts decision making across uh, St. Jude. The first example we're going to look at is uh, investments that were made, decisions that were made to invest in our organization to improve both uh, our research and also to further uh, provide the best patient care possible. Uh, there was an article written back in 2021 that literally highlights that we, we invested $11.5 billion to cancer research to further the research for every form of cancer out there, right? And so it's not like we put a little bit of money in, you know, 10 years ago, and then that was it. We are constantly fighting to invest so that we can fight and, and literally solve every form of cancer. In addition to that, we put an additional $1.9 billion into improving um, our facilities here locally, right? And that being from you know, the parking lot to the facilities that our patients, you know, reside in during their time here to also provide uh, more rooms, those kind of things for, for parents to stay in. Literally just the best possible scenario, right? We're always making that stuff better with no additional cost to our members or to our patients, excuse me. In addition to that, um, we also more or less conducted studies during the pandemic, um, which we didn't have to do, but we knew was the right thing to do because that faith is placed in us, which is also going to transcend to each and every single one of you in this training today. And so at the time, right, we wanted to understand um, the immune response, both, hey, what happens to somebody when they, you know, get sick right before having the vaccine and then also afterwards. And so we looked at both cases and, try, and basically tried to find out as much information we could so we could share that with uh, local community and get out ahead of, of, uh, of COVID as opposed to just sitting back and waiting for everyone else to take action. Because we knew, hey, people have placed faith in us, right? We were the ones that needed to, to understand that and remember that, and that's what drove us to, to these challenges and to conduct research um, on both the impacts before and after uh, vaccination. Now that you understand how faithfulness has impacted decision-making within this organization, let's talk about some lessons learned from the value of faithfulness. First off, when looking at where we started, you know, Danny Thomas deciding to, hey, not start this facility in Chicago and instead do so in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which is where we are. I'll tell you what, his faith that drove him to no kidding, do something regardless because he knew it was what he needed to do. It was the vision that he had. That faith, that never giving up, that fight has been there from the very beginning. That's that's literally where it started, right? So 
it's seen throughout, and that faith is what has driven us forward. Um, and it's not only seen by our providers within our organization, it's also seen by our patients, their families, uh, so on and so forth. In addition to that, that faithfulness has also driven collaboration and our dedication to that collaboration. You know, it it's allowed uh, more or less us to, 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 to have that faith during the toughest of times, right? So, hey, we, we believe in our organization, the strength of it, what we can do. And that's the support we were to provide during the pandemic and also during the Russian invasion. You know, we were the first ones to get into that, uh, into Ukraine, bring children out and get them the service they need, right? It's amazing to see and the impact this uh, faithfulness has had. In addition to that, it's also driven us to, once again, you know, provide cancer treatment, you know, and invest in that to, to children around the world um, at no cost to them, right? Also, our continuous research efforts for to fight acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is an extremely challenging disease, something we've been fighting for a long time, but the, our patients having trust in us and us having the faith to continue fighting forward. Um, it's, it's, it's just something that we've seen that, that's amazing, and it's what drives us forward to fight this disease and all diseases. Last but not least, our, how our, you know, the creation of our mission statement. You know, that faithfulness is found in basically the statement itself, and it also provides, which is what drives our employees and our leadership teams to continue fighting forward because they understand the why, our intent, and, our, and why we're driving forward in the direction that we're driving. And last but not least, um, and it ties back to God, right? The concept of believing in something that's more powerful than yourself and having hope is, is extraordinary. And that's exactly that, right? Believing in God and knowing that, hey, there, that he is a beacon of hope, it literally ties directly to this. And that's what faithfulness does. It, it allows us and allows folks to believe in that and give us that extra push to, to press every day and to know that we're making a difference in the lives of many. So now that we talked about the lessons learned and the impact that faithfulness has, has had on our organization, let's just do a recap of everything we've covered today. You know, the first thing was our organizational vision, which was literally to accelerate progress against catastrophic disease at a global level, meaning hey, our, our, our goal is to fight every single disease around the world um, that, that people are diagnosed with that could end their lives, you know, or cancerous or what have you. Uh, from there, we talked about the vision at work, and the example that, that we talked about was the research te team coming to develop, uh, coming together to, you know, test tumor development, uh, where they took a tumor, created it, which was basically lifelike in this case, bought it with different medications, and were able to increase life expectancy for roughly 40% of the patients that, they, that they're treating. From there, we jumped into the history of St. Jude. Uh, which included Danny Thomas starting this organization back in 1960. It being completely finalized in 1962, and it's been, we've been treating patients both around the Memphis area, from around the United States, around the world, ever since. Um, so there we jumped into the faithfulness value, which literally meant to never waver, or remain loyal in one's belief. That was according to Marion Webster, and that's literally what we've stuck to, right? Uh, we have literally been um, faithful to treating patients, to try and solve every form of cancer, and then also being that faith for parents and for kids because they, when, when they're at their worst, they have nowhere else to turn, they come to us. The example we gave was the young girl that had the brain tumor um, who came to us because her and her family had nowhere else to turn. And because we had had the experience, we were able to treat it, fight it, and, and cure it. Uh, from there, we talked about how faithfulness is displayed throughout our organization. Um, the example that we give is, uh, or that I gave was us supporting the Russian invasion and, you know, evacuating hundreds of children um, in the worst of time to get them to a location that was safe, both them and their families, and to treat them, allow them to have access to continuous treatment for, for their specific uh, needs. From there, we talked about how faithfulness is connected to St. Jude. Um, that exactly being, you know, we, we invested $200 million in support of an initiative that uh, we worked together with the World Health Organization to provide uh, access to health care to low and uh, middle income uh, individuals in those countries and literally at no cost to them. From there, we talked about decision making, the impact this has on faithfulness. Now, at that point in time, one of the decisions that we made was to invest in our organization and the research team. So, and we invested $11.5 billion into cancer research. 1.9 billion into our facilities to improve uh, uh, 
um, our ability to provide the best care possible to our patients. And last, we talked about some lessons learned um, and how the value of faithfulness has driven us forward, right? Some things we can take away, both that being when Danny Thomas made the decision to, to locate us here in Memphis, Tennessee, or to, um, in addition to that being dedication to collaboration. So, hey, you know, we worked with the World Health Organization. We, you know, we collaborated with uh, mm -hmm. a multitude of agencies over this period of time. We worked with folks during the pandemic. It was multiple things, but we, you know, really that was one of the major lessons learned there. And last but not least was just last but not least was our creation of our mission statement, which, you know, has driven us forward from start to finish. And so that's where we're headed. That's where we're going. Outside of that, unless you guys have any questions, this concludes our training for today on the value of faithfulness and, and how you need to understand what it is and the impact this will have um, not only on you, but on our organization and and to our patients and globally in both, you know, more or less in, in, in the worst of times. So thank you.